Hello, welcome to episode 24 of the 70s Civil Art Bar Show. Uh, my name is Civil Art. And this episode, uh, I have to be honest with you, uh, the pickings have been very slim this month of September so far. Uh, didn't buy much in terms of old 70s bars. Now, I just want to reemphasize that I did buy a bunch of other bars from like the early 80s and the 90s. Uh, but most of that, most of those bars were just strictly for my business to resell. So now these three bars I bought, uh, these will go to my personal collection. I don't plan, I do not, I do not plan to sell these. So uh, I'll start with this one. Uh, it's Joyce Limited Thanksgiving 1973 bar. Uh, it was minted by Hamilton Mint in 1973. It was struck for Joyce Limited. It's a Thanksgiving bar. It's something very interesting though because I looked at the price guide and I noticed that that particular bar, that's it right there. So you gotta go down. This is the bar right here. I noticed that uh, they put a rarity value of 175. Now, I just want to say that just because the price got listed at that rarity value does not necessarily mean that it'll sell for that. So, now, I don't know how much it would actually go for on eBay. I don't plan to. Well, that's my camera, by the way. I don't plan to sell it, so I don't know. But I think just out of curiosity, I'm going to look online to see uh, what these have sold for. So, I'm just, I'm just curious. I'm gonna do the, I call it the eBay test. If there's a lot of these on eBay, then it's not really... As rare as one might suspect, because there's no mintage listed, so if there are not many on here, there's not probably not many out there. So, yeah, toning. I've now I bought this yesterday, uh, on the 13th of September. Bought this yesterday, so it's like I said, it's like a little after 1:30. It's like one, it was 1:31 or something in the morning of uh, September 14th. So, I'm a night owl. I can't help it, but this is one of the bars. You know, like I said, I pick, all three of these I picked up. Oops. All three of these I picked up at the uh, various local dealers. This one I bought yesterday. This one I bought, This these two, this Coca-Cola Nashville bar. I bought, uh, let's see, I think I bought that last week. I bought these two last week. So now this bar, now I do want to say now, the the time of these purchases, you know, the spot average spot price for me was around fourteen fifty or fourteen fifteen. So when I bought these, spot was in the fourteen dollar and fifteen cent range. So I paid paid eighteen for this bar. I paid fifteen for this bar yesterday. And I paid eighteen for this. You know, now these Wargate bug bars from the Colonial Mint, nineteen seventy four. Uh, I see a bunch of these on eBay. Uh, very low rarity value. And like I said, I probably paid a tad bit more than I wanted. But like I said, old vintage bars from the 70s like this are hard to find anyway. So, I mean, I have to take what I can get. And then, uh, co now, co color bars, they generally carry premium on eBay, which is good for me. Uh, even though I'm not going to sell this one, you know, it's the fact that it really buying a Coca-Cola bar for under $20 is to me a steal a deal. Even though these are fairly comp, these are fairly common Coca-Cola bars. This one right here is fairly common. So you're not, it's not a rare Coca-Cola bar, but just the fact that you can get it for under 20, I got it for under $20 to me. That's a good, that's a good deal. And this yeah, I probably paid a little too much for it, but given that spot's like in the fourteen dollar and fifteen cent range right now. Probably, you know, but I'm not complaining too much. Like I said, it's all good. I want to say this one. I'm not really sure about this bar right here. You know, normally just a regular holiday themed bar like a Thanksgiving. It's Mayflower too, like Thanksgiving bar. The Normally those bars carry low premiums, okay, on eBay. 
so in terms of selling. But this one is different. I don't know how much it actually would go for. Uh, I mean, like I said, I don't plan to sell this one, but I'm just going to do a test to see how many I've actually sold on eBay. Be interested to see how many I find. I'm also going to do a, uh, a test to see how many are out there currently for sale. That just gives me an idea of what people think the market is for that. So, uh, now this bar right here, like I said, Wargate Bug. Yeah. Like I said, it, it, very low premium. Oh, sorry, very low rarity value. There's a lot of these out there. Don't know how many exactly, but I'm thinking it's probably a very high mintage. And, you know, Hound to Mint bars also have high mintages as well. You know, 10,000, 15,000 per bar, that's that's usually been the norm. And if they're gold plated version bar, gold plated silver version bars, they're usually like 5,000 mintage, which is very high still. So. You know, it's, it just depends. But I think really this month so far has really been better for me as a seller because I sold some rare bars and I made a lot of money on that, which is good because, you know, it gives me a chance to go out and buy more old bars for either for me or for resale for my business. So that's that's always a good thing. But like I said, this month so far, it's almost mid midpoint of September. Uh, nothing much. Slim pickings for this month. And like I said, these are the three bars that I found that I'm gonna keep for myself. Uh, like I said, I did buy some other bars from like different decades. Like I said, early '80s. I bought, I think I bought like 30 bars so far this month. But the most of those are actually all of those except for these three right here. All those are for resale. Uh, I bought those from a business inventory. Uh, and like I said. With spot being this low, you know, you're not going to have much luck finding old bars like this. It's hard anyway, but when spot gets this low, you know, there's not many of these that will, you know, you're not going to see many of these. Uh, you're not going to see, you know, many Coca-Cola bars anyway, but, you know, it's just, it's just one of those times that you're not going to be able to buy as much. And as a business person, it's, you know, when I sell you know, when I sell as much as I do a month, sometimes it's hard to replenish that because they're just not out there. You have, you have to go out and find stuff. And I'm one of those people where, you know, I have like six, uh, about six or seven dealers, local dealers that I call. And I'm one of those people, I need to work the phones every day uh, to ask to see if they if they bought anything recently. Because sometimes you have to, you have to be aggressive especially now because this kind of market is a buyer's market in terms of silver so people will be buying silver okay i mean not necessarily for a business to resell like i am but you know they're, they're adding to their you know stack their you know regular stackers that just buy just to have silver and there's people other collectors that buy stuff just for their collection so obviously i have competition okay and you know, I have competition. I have I have to work a little harder to uh, acquire stuff like this. And when you know, sometimes you just have to you know, just be aggressive. Like with me, I I make calls a day to uh, certain local dealers in my area. I mean, I call every day. Uh, you know, uh, do you have any, do you bring anything? Did you buy anything lately? Uh, did you get anything? And see, I have a good relationship with a lot of with all the dealers in the local area. So they know who I am. They know what I'm looking for. I've done so much business with each of them in the past few years, even as a collector. Even before I had a business, uh, I've done a lot of business with them as a collector looking for stuff for me. So they, they know me really well. They gave me good deals. And you know, like I said, I'm helping them. They're helping me. We're helping each other out. So that's a good thing. So I always have a good relationship with my local dealers. Uh, and that's a good. That's very good. But just getting back to this, nothing. Well, I better not say nothing spectacular, because like I said, this bar, uh, this bar is probably the best purchase of of the three that I found so far this month. That the ones I won't keep in terms, but like I said, very common. This is common for a Coca Cola bar. Uh, like I said, this mid this well with ten thousand. Now there's a there's an Atlanta bar, Coca Cola bar that had a mintage of fifty thousand. 
Uh, now this, you know, the Chad, there's a Chattanooga bar, very common. I had a mintage of 10,000. Now I think the Nashville, I think Nashville had like 20, I want to say 20, 30,000. I'm going to have to check the Coca-Cola bar guidebook on that, but it's very common. And that's the point I'm making. These are, this Coca-Cola bar is common, but I paid a good price for it because usually even the common Coca-Cola bars have, uh, okay, they usually, uh, have big premiums over those. So that's, that's a good deal in terms of that. And that's pretty much it. I just wanted to share that. Like I said, not much this month in terms of the old 70s bars. Uh, they're hard to find, but when spots this low, when it's in the low 14s, you know, it just makes it even more difficult to find. So I'm keep, I'm going to keep on looking. I'm going to keep on working the phones. Uh, you know, you never know what the local dealers will bring in. They'll buy. So it's it's always an adventure. Sometimes a lot of times I strike out a lot. Uh, you know, a lot this month I've struck out, but usually if they have some, I'll, I'll look at it and see, and see if it's worth it buying or not. So I, have to, you know, in my case, I generally look for stuff that, and you know, being a businessman now, I look for stuff that I can resell. You know, if it, if I don't buy it for my collection, I look to resell. You know, if it if it's at a low enough price, usually. I'll know what I'll price it at before I buy it. I have an idea of what I'll price it at, given what I could pay for it. So usually I know that coming in. You know, I look at it and say, okay, I'll price it at this amount. Great. I know what the deal will charge me. So, you know, it works out pretty good. And like I say, I think yesterday, I think I saw some other Hamilton Mint bars that I didn't buy. Because like I said, you know, this, this bar, I wanted this for my collection. Now, if he still has more of those bars tomorrow, I might go and buy some. But I think at this point, I probably, I'll probably, probably skip on the, Hamilton, the other Hamilton Mint bars I saw at that dealer today. Uh, a lot of them, I think, were like Wonders of America, which I have plenty of those for sale, uh, currently for sale. So I'm not looking to buy more of those unless unless the spot just falls just falls, falls through the floor and it goes to like 13 or, or 12 or whatever. And then, yeah, I might, I might pick a few. But other than that, now nah, I'm going to pass on those. So that's pretty much it. I just wanted to share what I bought so far this month. Like I said, not much. But then again, I bought other bars and other or other silver art bars from different decades and others and some silver art rounds that I bought for resale. So, but in terms of this kind of stuff, these old 70s bars, very slim pickings. I mean, it just, I had to dig deep. I definitely have to just keep calling to see what else I can find. Go to the flea market, see what else I can find there. Uh, there's not many coin shows. I'm not. I probably won't do any coin shows this month. But there's probably a coin show, a local coin show that I'll do in November uh, to look for old bars. But other than that, I think I'm just gonna stay local and just see what I can find. But yeah, that's pretty. Like I said, that's pretty much it. Just wanted to share that with you. Uh, hope everybody's doing okay. I'm doing fine. Life is good. Uh, just trying to keep on keeping on. So that's that's it. And until next time, goodbye.